how are we doing people we're over here and we're finishing up the trailer and uh, that's a sneak peek of it right there let's take a look we've got the uh, black this is a urethane uh, paint the same thing I put on my Dodge um, frame for the W250 the 86 and I had a few questions online uh, a couple fellas said well I see you put uh, etching primer down and then you put epoxy it's not necessary to do both um, it's just where I was at in the process I had some bare metal and where I'm at I travel for work people I'm not always home so what I have to do if I'm gonna be gone I have to make sure I lay down something on it right and the situation is with the epoxy primer you've only got a, like a three-day window to do something with it so if I'm gone for three weeks now I've got to go ahead and scuff everything and I'm not gonna do that so what I did was I just put some uh, etching primer down to keep it from rusting and then I knew I was gonna lock it all in with the uh, epoxy primer now remember epoxy primer is not a sandable primer that you would sand something out and and uh, go ahead and put a top coat on epoxy primer is a sealer okay it's just what it states it is epoxy what is epoxy if you went down and bought epoxy glue what is it it's two parts okay it's it's a uh, it's a it's a, a, a part one and then there's a hardener same thing with the epoxy primer it is a hardened type uh, primer that when it goes on it's meant to go on just before you paint okay so what it does is any other primers or any other coatings underneath it if you've already roughed them up and got it prepped what happens is it go it, it what it does is it once that's all on there you don't want a reaction with the with the paint on the old primers you don't know what people have put on there so you put a sealer down okay and it locks it down and that's kind of what I've done here and uh, just because I'll put it this way the truck out back okay now I turn around and did the same process and you wind up checking it out year, you know after a year or so and saying did it hold up and it's excellent and that's like rock hard it's very good um, now I did go ahead and just because it's outdoors I threw a little a light coat of fluid film on it until I can get to uh, putting the body on that truck but that's the same thing here when this hardens up properly um, this urethane is like a bullet this thing goes on there and it is it's it locks it down it's very durable it's it's made for implements and stuff like that frames now once I get this all um, I'm gonna let this cure for a couple days I've got to go out of town when I come back next week I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with some fluid film and all that is is a top coat so that no uh, moisture no no uh, uh, corrosion can even start I have a good base now I have a good uh, epoxy primer holding everything down underneath it's there's just good adhesion there but if you have a bare frame and you you sandblast it you can go right to epoxy primer you don't need a self etch um, you can do either one right but if you're gonna just epoxy primer make sure you have your paint on hand you, you don't want to wait a month and then say I'm gonna go ahead and get the paint you'll have to scuff it, it, it otherwise you're gonna get peeling okay so you want to make sure if you're gonna put epoxy primer down sealer you want to make sure you have your paint ready to go in a time frame and a window I mean look at the sky uh, I'm in upstate New York people so I have to capitalize on uh, again I travel for work so when I'm gone I, I, I don't just come home every night from a nine to five and say I can spend three or four hours on something when I'm home I have to stay on stuff I have to stay diligent I have to get on it and I have to get her done now I was gonna go white I was gonna go white with the uh, rims but here's what I've come up with I think I'm gonna stick with this gray I got this nice um, it's a wheel paint four wheels and I'm gonna go gray I may even do something like a black center with a gray like a gray outside but for now we're gonna get the tires mounted on there tomorrow these axles are going on and that's a, that's the deal now take a look over here You've got to get creative sometimes when you're painting things. So if you want to get something that's all the way around, when you're painting and you don't want to uh, have to mix more paint, you've got to be able to spin things around. You know, you want to be able to get all the way underneath it, 
all the way around and you've got to get creative now those are the uh, the hangers that hold the two uh, uh, the, the two uh, leaf springs together but I want to show you something else I had a viewer ask me what kind of paint sprayer did you use I use this here this is like a bank 7 style it is a siphon gun now the reason I use that I have a nice Devilbus setup that's for uh, when I paint the truck I'm gonna be using that but the tips you got to realize what you're spraying people this is a thicker substance you can thin it down a hair but this is a thicker substance when you're laying it down you need something with at least a 1.8 tip okay so what I did was I used a siphon gun and I set the pressure to about 25 psi at the gun and again just when you're done break it down and now here's the thing you can use different types of uh, cleaners but the best thing I found is a five dollar can of choke and carb cleaner it cleans everything up real fast you can get in all the little areas make sure you break the gun down all the way get down through the tubes now I will not be painting a car with this gun people this is a thirty five dollar Harbor Freight gun but for laying down epoxy primer and laying down uh, urethane paint on on frames and stuff like that that's all you need okay and as you can see uh, that's the epoxy primer I used. I'm using that just to hold some of the um, cleanup fluid in there. But that's a JP375. That was a gray. Okay. I have a gallon of that in the white that I'm going to be painting uh, my truck body with when it comes time to do that. But uh, as you can see, keep your keep your cups clean, keep your tips clean. You know, you ain't got to jump and throw the gun down immediately and start cleaning it, but you need to get on it. After you're done spraying, you need to get your, you need to have the more organization, the better. Again, now if I was to take this gun and spray this frame with it, even the epoxy primer, and throw it away, and go grab another one for $35, now you say that's, that's ridiculous. Well, here's the deal. You got $5 in cleaner, okay? <laughs> you got rags, you got everything else. So let's just put it this way. Yes, I cleaned it. Yes, I I got it ready to go again but at the end of the day if that's a uh, if that's a throwaway item it's a loss then it's a loss you know there's nothing saying you can't keep the uh, the bowl and some of the parts but if you wind up gumming it up real bad or something you know where you can't get it clean you can just toss it I mean they're cheap you can get them at Harbor Freight pretty cheap now I did go with um, even though I have an air set up uh, to extract moisture on my compressor and I have a really nice compressor I've got an Ingersoll Rand 60 gallon. Okay, I think it's like 14 CFM at 90. And then I've got this here. This is, uh, I mean, not, to, not to, to go back or nothing, but that compressor is the cat's pajamas. If you're starting out, hold on a minute. If you're starting out and you say to yourself, I need to get some tools for my garage, do not buy a cheap compressor. Don't even buy one. If you have to get a payment plan, do something. But get a good compressor. You won't regret it, okay? Now, I got that at Tractor Supply, and I think it was uh, six months interest-free or a year, okay? And it was like, uh, I want to say it was like just under $800. That was before Joe Biden took office. Now they're $1,500. But at the end of the day, uh, turn around and try to get yourself a good compressor. It comes in handy for everything. If you're taking tires off, if you're grinding, if you're using any of the air guns, the chisels, the needlers, you don't have to sit there and there's nothing more frustrating when you've only got so many hours of daylight that you have to wait for the compressor to kick to pick up and catch up but uh, I just want to give you one last rundown on this there's the tires people okay the wheels tires rims whatever you want to call them um, there's the frame now I threw some tarps down just to catch some of the overspray uh, and it worked pretty good I did get a little bit up front but uh, you know, we'll pressure wash it. The driveways are meant to be used, people. I'm not trying to impress the neighbors. But uh, let's take a look at some of the other products we got here. Here's the other thing. Make sure you stay up to date on on your, uh, when you're going to mix stuff, make sure that you have an area that you can actually, I just turned this tub upside down. It's just a wash, like a scrub tub. Now here's um here's the, the paint that I use. It's a shop line series. PPG makes it. I just had this mixed. I had like a, a quarter of a can. 
I thought it would be enough, but I wound up having to use like a um, just under a third, no, just under a quarter of this can. So I've still got three quarters of this can left. It's a JAU shop line. Um, let's see here. Mm, it's a quart. Okay, it's 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 actually a pretty good uh, price. I want to say this was like sixty-five bucks for this, and then with the uh, hardener, this is a uh, this is a one part, and then there's another little hardener jug. I actually used up an old one. Uh, it's a, it's it's a four to one to one. Now I don't have the hardener right here, but you use uh, four parts of the paint, one part of the reducer, and one part of the hardener. And I use the fast hardener, people. I use the fast hardener and I couldn't be happier with it it's actually uh, dry to the touch and here what we're gonna do all the hangers got painted really good okay all the hangers got painted nicely as you can see I got up underneath them real good and now the task will be tomorrow morning okay tomorrow the plan is to take and put these uh, wheels on the um, the new wheels on the rims okay and the other thing we're going to do is get these hangers all hung. We have all new hardware for them. Uh, let me show you that because you're, you're probably wanting to see that. But these are the new bolt assemblies and you can see the hole in there. If you can see that or not right by my finger. That's where the grease is supposed to come through and keep everything uh, lubricated. There's a square piece built right into the uh, bolt. A nice little end on there. A little zerk. But uh, that's the deal there people we are making it happen and the situation here is we couldn't be happier with that black high gloss urethane hard paint that's going to be on that frame and uh, you know I'm in the rust belt area they would call this and they do put salt on the roads here where I'm from but uh, rest assured I won't be trying to run that through the salt you know what I mean I'm going to try to uh, keep that just for summertime use as you know, um, I'm not trying, I, I have a job. I have a job that keeps me pretty busy, but in the summer and in the spring and the fall time, I can use this trailer. And even though I got it fluid filmed, I'm gonna try to keep it nice as I can because I got Tonka over here. I got Tonka back there, if you can see it. And that's what's gonna be towing this. But uh, we're not gonna run her in the winter neither because we're even though we fluid filmed her, we're not gonna turn around and uh, try to get salt all up in the wiring harnesses and all that I don't need to I don't need to run that in the winter so we're just gonna keep that and then come spring summer and fall we'll be driving that truck but uh, anyway that's that's the situation with the uh, 2005 super cam line 12 foot dump trailer and those are Dexter axles by the way those are the uh, the heavier axles it's a 10,000 uh, GWR so I can haul roughly around 7,500 pounds so there you go people we're uh, we're pretty happy with it I wanted to give you an update I wanted to give you some of the products I use because uh, sometimes I skip past that stuff because I'm so excited but uh, at the end of the day we're getting her done we're getting her done right because as you know if you ain't getting her done right you ain't getting her done at all this is Bry I got to get on down the road